right now on Justice. A new report alleges improper financial dealings involving the Clinton Foundation. Sound familiar? More serious issue, of course, is the Clinton Foundation. It has since blossomed into a $2 billion organized criminal enterprise parading as a charitable foundation with hubby Bill profiting as the world's middleman. I've been telling you about this for years. And tonight, the case against the Clintons. Plus, uh, I think for the most part, we agree on a lot of different items and uh, we're getting there. Optimism from Donald Trump about coming to an agreement with Paul Ryan. Tonight, one of the most prominent members of the Trump team, Dr. Ben Carson, is here with some inside information. And later, Secretary Clinton received, if my memory is correct, about 450 superdelegates before anybody else was in the race. Hey, Bernie, I'm with you. I'll get into this super delicate mess with a member of the Sanders team as we approach yet another Tuesday contest for the Democrats. So I say to those super delegates in the states where we won landslide victories, listen to the people of your state. And listen good, justice starts now. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. Now to my open. Hillary Clinton cannot be president of the United States. And if the establishment, including law enforcement, does not stop her, you have to. Now this is not about politics or political favoritism. It's about you, your family, and this great nation. It's about preventing people who have no regard for the law, or you for that matter, from running this country. At a time when just about everybody is fed up with establishment politicians, when two outsiders are winning epic contests against preordained presidential candidates, Hillary Clinton is still in line to be coronated the Democratic nominee for President of the United States. Now, how can the woman who is under criminal investigation, who knows she's under criminal investigation, but lies to your face saying that she's not, continue on her path to the White House? Now, the majority of Americans believe and are right that Hillary Clinton is untrustworthy, dishonest, and a liar. Hillary has danced with federal prosecutors for most of her career. She knows how to delete, conceal, and destroy evidence. Remember those pesky missing Rose Law Firm files? Not to mention 30,000 deleted emails deleted in a minute. She lies so much she doesn't know the difference between the truth and a lie, and like most liars, can't keep those stories straight. Example. This week, in response to Hillary's claim that the FBI was doing a security inquiry on her private homebrewed server, one, by the way, conducted reportedly by over 100 FBI agents, FBI Director Jim Comey says, security inquiry? I don't know that term. We investigate crimes. This is a law enforcement proceeding. I told you guys that three months ago. Now, the cynics among you may say it's all political, but Jim Comey is appointed by Barack Obama, and he is one of the most clear-headed, brilliant, logical, and honorable people in Washington, D.C., a trait somewhat foreign to that town. And don't give me that woman thing where, oh, it's time for a female president. Yeah, it is but not her. What makes you think that electing this woman who spent most of her career riding her husband's coattails is necessarily a good thing? Doesn't it depend on the individual, man or woman? And for those of you who think a woman will automatically help other women, consider this. The Clinton Foundation, an organization over which the Clintons have control, pays female employees 38 cents less per dollar than males. 
So much for that old pay inequality thing. Supporting women? Hillary made her bones creating the attack team on all the women who said Bill engaged in sexual activity, ranging from harassment to affairs to worse. But if these women are all liars, as they say, why was Paula Jones awarded $850,000 from the Clintons and Monica Lewinsky's dress? If only that blue dress could talk. Which brings me to the Clinton Foundation, an alleged 501c3 not-for-profit parading as a charity that I see as nothing more than a piggy bank for the Clintons and their friends and her presidential campaign. Just this week, it was reported that this wonderful charitable organization gave $2 million to Bill's blonde divorcee friend designated the energizer by the Secret Service when she visited him at his home in Chappaqua, when Hillary, of course, was on the road. The report in the Wall Street Journal says money from the charity was actually given to a for-profit company, partly owned by Miss Energizer. According to government watchdog groups, this may very well violate federal law. And consistent with past Clinton behavior, the destruction and or removal of evidence begins. Shortly after the grant, Miss Energizer's company was reportedly removed from the Clinton Global Initiative's website. I'm sure it was an oversight like the monies from countries to the foundation when Hillary was Secretary of State, which countries her department made decisions that benefited. You know, the Clintons have always been about the Clintons. Evidence? Benghazi. She lied about the video when she knew it was Al-Qaeda so that she could benefit politically. But even that doesn't matter as much as knowing there are men waiting for help on a rooftop for hours in Benghazi when the assault on that consulate took place. And you, of course, remember that 2003 campaign 3 a.m. phone call. She wants you to believe shows that she is ready to protect us. That's baloney. She had a chance to prove it in Benghazi, and she proved just the opposite, that her political future was more important than American lives. And the woman has no shame, claiming that the parents of Sean Smith and Tyrone Woods are lying, not her, about what she said to them as her children's bodies were brought into Andrews. The woman has never been able to keep her story straight from one Blackberry for convenience, and then there were three. And then from three, there were 30,000 emails destroyed. She engages in the destruction of evidence to protect herself. And she and Bill are in it together. Bill just last week saying that email thing, that email investigation is kind of like a speeding ticket. Really, Bill? No, Bill. It's got nothing to do with a speeding ticket. It's got to do with espionage, conspiracy, destruction of evidence, concealment, and risking the secrets of this great nation for the world to see. Even Russia has admitted it's gotten 20,000 of her emails. Guccifer, the guy from Romania that they brought over, a convicted hacker, says that hacking Hillary's emails was one of the easiest things he had ever done. So why do they get away with it? Why do they or why can they do things that if any of us, even a four-star general does, would put us in jeopardy or in jail? What is it about them that puts them above the law? I submit it is the people that are indebted to them. The people for whom the Clintons have done favors. The people that she actually emailed on that server that might be in jeopardy for having received those emails and knowing there was classified information on her email, on that unsecured server, on that non-government website. The classic inside game is what the Clintons do. 
You know, for years, Americans have been working two and three jobs to support their families, and they've watched as Washington politicians elected to represent us walk into those hallowed chambers and proceed to line their pockets and their pensions and their campaign reelection coffers and walk out multimillionaires. And the Clintons are no different. In fact, they're among the worst. If the establishment is not willing to admit that no one is above the law and is not willing to garner justice, then ordinary Americans need to make sure that the scales of justice are level for all of us. And that means that Hillary cannot be president. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page or Twitter. Hashtag Judge Janine.